Hey, what's up team? It's Sherman here from Geek Psychology. Today's video is on extroverted thinking, TE. Uh, so to break it down as we always do here, thinking is non-human centric. It's about logic and empirical data. It's objective in that sense. And it's also a judging function. It helps you make decisions, it tells you what you should do in a situation. And extroversion is looking outside of yourself to the environment, to the world around you, to what other people can see and notice and understand as well. And kind of using that to, to interact with the world, you know, the things that everybody shares. So extroverted thinking combines those two, and it's using objective, kind of rational, logical information and, and data and criteria and stuff to create movement in the world, to make a decision that it affects the environment. Um, kind of possibly restructuring the situation, moving people around, moving things around, and using that empirical data to, to make the correct choice. I say correct because you know everybody has their different kind of criteria and things that they look into. So extroverted thinkers look towards the, the measurements and the evidence um, to, to make proper decisions. And so what I mean by measurements is things like the cost reduction or the time uh, saved by making these decisions or um, productivity or efficiency, kind of those things. These quantifiable data and results. So they look at a decision and, and think, what do I need to do to get to this end goal? They have their end goal and they kind of break it down into little pieces with a sledgehammer and then, you know, this is the first step, this is the second step, this is the third step. And also the, the different contingencies within the whole situation. So plan A, plan B, plan C, right? If this doesn't work, then we have a backup plan that we can go to. Uh, my extroverted thinking friends always have this backup plan. So today we're planning on doing this. If it rains or if this happens, then we're going to do this. I mean, it, it sounds like it's like an obvious thing. Like, of course, this is what you should do. You should make backup plans. But this is like how extroverted thinkers structure their decisions constantly. Right? It's having these contingencies, being able to still reach your goal or something very close to your goal no matter what happens through hell and high water you know pushing through um, and another way that they they um kind of work towards their goals is having rules and boundaries having structure this is acceptable this is not acceptable this is how we do this this is how we reach our goal and they look for what is functioning properly or not functioning properly within that. So seeing a person not doing their job within that structure, within the, those rules and boundaries and, and following those reliable methods, that's going to be this big red flag that, well, this person is not pulling their weight. They're not doing what they should be doing. And then they have to deal with that. And usually it's not based on feelings. It's not kind of beating around the bush. It's like, you're not doing what you should be doing. This is how we do it. This is how you should do it. This is the evidence to back that up, the empirical evidence. Don't, please don't think of that as being an asshole or being mean or anything like that which is something I honestly struggled with for a while because it's my inferior function and it just seemed wrong to me. It's something I've repressed for so long. Uh, but it, this is necessary to, to lead companies and, and to make solid decisions. You need all these different judging functions. You need all the perceiving functions to gather the data and stuff. All the classes are necessary. You cannot defeat the end game dragons if you don't have 
the support of all the other classes. And you need somebody to make those tough decisions that, that say, you know, this is, this is the way it needs to be done. Put your feelings aside, put all this other stuff aside, you know, and, and just go for what really works and what's going to get us to the end game. Another idea for like functioning properly is, is kind of seeing your gear. Okay, you got your weapons, you got your gear, and and thinking about, well, I'm going to fight this fire-breathing dragon, so I need fire-resistant armor. It's just something I need. If you're going traveling, you know, a long way, you're going to need the proper gear to get you there. It doesn't matter what you feel about your gear. Like, as an introverted feeler, you could be like, well, this this gear matches who I am. This expresses who I am as a person and my values. But does that really matter? Maybe not. You know, so an extroverted thinker, these geomancers, which I'll talk about in a second, are going to do what works. They're going to take what functions properly and use that to carry them forward. One of my, <laughs> my ESTJ friends said, um, we, we live in Japan, we live in Tokyo, and he was talking to a staff at some store or something like that. And uh, he said that he, he talked to the staff in his didn't drop a beat Japanese, and the staff res responded, replied with broken ass English. And he was like, well, one could vouch that he was trying to be nice or kind or helpful by speaking English, but losing communicative ability through that shit isn't high level service. So the idea that you are not contributing to this high level, this high standard by trying to be nice it slows things down and it corrupts it it doesn't go as smoothly as it should because of that i hope that gives you a little insight into one extroverted thinker's way of of uh expressing extroverted thinking extroverted thinkers are what i call geomancers so these are the ones that are pulling in resources from the world around them drawing it in, restructuring the world, the environment, and then creating a path for themselves and, and their allies to go forward on. Some of the abilities are oil, um, burn the midnight oil, or speed things up. Uh, it could also be used to, to blaze a path. There are a lot of uses for oil. Uh, meteor. Meteor is just a giant meter, boom, slams the earth, slams the ground, and everybody around there, showing everybody the, the charts, the data, the graphs, the empirical evidence that you can't deny. Like, this is why this is the right decision. You have to accept it. <laughs> it's the obvious choice. Uh, another ability is boulder roll. Imagine a tiny boulder, or maybe a big boulder, whatever at the top of a mountain, kind of rolling down and picking up more and more dirt and, and rocks as it rolls. Those pieces of dirt and rock and all that stuff is the other evidence. So it's, this is similar to Meteor. It's just, it starts small, but the more data you get, the decision is going to just be unstoppable. Like this, all of this data, gets us going and puts us in the right place. And uh, like, so it'll start small. It'll start as like, well, let's just do this. And then the more you think about it, the more you look around, you're like, well, yeah, that's, that's the correct choice because of this and because of this, because of this. And the boulder just gets bigger and bigger and unstoppable. Petrifying touch is to define clear standards for a, a situation or a thing. It's kind of to solidify the target by touching it. And that's what extroverted thinkers and these geomancers do. They are always looking for those, those clear, defined standards, boundaries, rules, and steps and all that stuff. 
Another one is room. Room is kind of use this whole area around you, whatever that is, and restructure within that. So moving things. If you've watched One Piece, you might know this ability, but um, <laughs> it's basically moving people around, moving things around within a situation to make it all function better. And the last ability I'll talk about is Earth Shard. Just hurl this giant spiked gem shard at somebody and it basically it's just getting right to the point because that's what extroverted thinkers want as well is to just not beat around the bush just go this is what we're doing i'm going to say it clearly and obviously and here we are <laughs> and the next video is going to be on the st types estj istj estp istp and some of the the things that they share this is called a club um, i call it a profession like kind of an rpg profession and these are the blacksmiths so we'll talk about that in the next video thank you very much for watching good luck have fun peace